All right, so I'm going to go run through here on the area action quick. I figured it'd be more helpful than trying to type it out. So say you want to copy a wall. Sorry. <laughs> right click, select the building, click on the wall. Um, it will copy everything except clickable items like pipes and belts. So it's probably going to copy these. It doesn't always for some reason. I don't know why, but... Go to the copy section and then here it's measured in uh, meters just like the foundations so if you want it to go one foundation it's going to be eight half a foundation is four etc um, so once you have this window open you can hit hide and supposedly there's arrows but since I'm so close to the ceiling they're probably on the floor above me um, however the axes you need to worry about are the X and the Y so I just figure out which is which because they're not always the same Now you see it's copied at one foundation in front. So negative eight on the X axis is the direction I need to go. I want to go six of these since that's the full length of a pipe segment, I believe. So six times eight is 48. Looks good, so I'm gonna hit okay. It has now copied four pieces of building, which would be the wall and the three pipe holes. Now let's say you want to do a wall section. What I recommend is the fill. And let me give you a tip here that I've learned. When you're doing a wall, I recommend not clicking a section of wall that's already done like this. I would set one section of wall here and just one, because if you have something above it, it'll generally select both items and duplicate them. So if you have a window or something, you may not want that because the pattern may not be consistent to how you want it to look. Sorry, our keyboard's being weird. So select the building, I'm gonna select the wall and then bear the auto save coming up. And then we're gonna go to the fill option here and I'll finish explaining this once it saves. All right, sorry about that. So the fill thing is the same concept. However, this doesn't measure out here. This is the amount of items you wanna fill. And if we hit hide, you can see we actually have an arrow this time. So if I wanna to go to the right, I want to do negative on the green axis, the Y. So let's do uh, five walls to the right. As you can see, we have our walls. And keep in mind, it's always one less than you put. It's like zeros and ones in programming. Um, one is actually zero, I guess you would explain it. <laughs> um, so that's actually nine walls. So I need 11 to be 10. Um, and if I wanted to go up, I go here. Hit preview. Hey, now our six walls high, or five. I don't know. Always preview because things don't always go the way you think they will. It, I've screwed some stuff up and had to revert my save. Now if I don't want this, I can just simply hit the X and it's not going to apply that. That's not what I want there obviously. So then I can hit clear to unselect the wall. Now something I'd like to explain with the fill is a nice thing I forgot to mention here. Fill here. Now the second column border, you can actually use this to offset things. So if I wanted uh, five walls, not 50, and then I want them to be spaced. This is weird, you have to play with it because it's not always a foundation width, but see here it will offset every, every other foundation. So if I put eight in this column, it is gonna do every eight, it'll place something. This is nice if you're trying to uh, you know, put wall power mounts up or something of that nature, you can duplicate them that way. I actually uh, cheated on these storage buffers and placed them all in a button click because I've placed several thousand of these by hand already and I don't want to do them all. 
it's it's just a great time saver and I value my time more than I do clicking my mouse button until my mouse breaks so hopefully this has been helpful let me know if you have any questions